Pruning is a process that we've used to open up the trees for better light penetration and to manage the canopy within its space. But in addition, a product of pruning that we often don't think about is that we are reducing the number of flower buds with our normal pruning. What we're asking here is that we prune to a specific flower bud number, not just until the tree looks good to us with our experienced horticultural eye. This requires you to know how many flowering spurs you should leave. And I hasten to want to clarify here, we're talking about flowering spurs, not flowers on lateral buds on one-year wood. Generally, we thin off most of those through thinning. On one-year wood, we count the terminal bud at the end of the shoot, not the lateral buds. So here we count the terminal as number one, the spur as number two, and this terminal as number three. We don't count the lateral bud here. With Gala, we recommend leaving a few extra insurance buds because of the possibility of frost or poor pollination. 50% extra insurance buds is plenty in New York. If you leave more than that, you often end up with too many fruits and too small a fruit size. So if we take 113 apples that we want on a typical tall spindle gala tree planted at three by 11, multiply it by 1.5, we should be leaving 170 spurs. Now I wanna emphasize that number, it's less than 200. Often gala trees will have four to 500 flowering spurs on them. With Honeycrisp, as we said before, the number of desired fruits is less, but also through research decided we need to leave more insurance buds, both to help in biennial bearing, also because if you have too few buds, you get too large a fruit size. So we take the number 73, which is our target fruit number, and in this case, multiply it by 1.8, leaving 131 spurs. Now, if you'll look at those two numbers for Galen Honeycrisp, we're obviously leaving fewer total spurs on Honeycrisp, but we also want fewer total fruits. I want to introduce two physiological concepts right here. The first physiological concept is illustrated by the figure with the blue arrow showing that in the springtime at green tip, the tree mobilizes reserves of carbohydrates and hormones, particularly cytokines from the roots, and moves them up in the tree. The tree also, with the spring flush of growth, takes up nitrogen primarily and many other nutrients and transports them up the tree. When the tree has an excessive number of buds, that amount of cytokinin and carbohydrates and nitrogen that the root system is taking up to the top is divided into many, many buds leaving each bud with less than the optimal level of nitrogen, carbohydrates, and cytokinins. That results in weak buds. Now, weak buds have low fruit set. They also produce small fruit, and weak buds are more biennial. The pruning for gala has to be done before green tip, and if that's done, each of the remaining buds, this 180 buds that we're going to leave, will get more nitrogen, more carbohydrates and more cytokinins resulting in more vigorous buds, larger fruit size and less bienniality. Now, a second concept, physiological concept that I want to introduce is that if you leave a lot of buds, you end up with a lot of little fruitlets, at least from bloom until you can get them thinned off either at the 10 millimeter or by hand thinning at 30 millimeters. But that excessive number of fruits has a lot of seeds and every seed produces gibberellin hormone and exports it out of the seed into the bud on that same spur. Gibberellin is the anti-flowering hormone. And in fact, if you spray gibberellins at this time, you can reduce flowering the next year. But these seeds are potent factories of gibberellins and having excessive seed number on the tree by leaving too many buds causes biennial bearing. Let me use two examples with Honeycrisp. First, a Honeycrisp tree where you prune it to the recommended bud load of 131 flowering spurs. Now, each one of those spurs will have five fruits in the flower cluster, and then you multiply by, by 10 seeds per fruit. You come up with about 60,550 seeds on that tree starting at bloom. Now, some of them won't set, and you'll thin off some of them, but you start with a lot of seeds. The second example is Honeycrisp, which was not pruned to the adequate bud load number. And often we find that uh, 
trees that aren't pruned heavily enough have several hundred flowering spurs on the on year. I put 219, but if you multiply that by five fruits and 10 seeds per spur, you get 10,950 seeds, almost double. And you just think about every one of those seeds producing gibberellin. And that's why when you have too many seeds, you don't get any flower initiation. This all starts with pruning and is one of the main reasons we need to reduce the number of flowering spurs on Honeycrisp to break biannual bearing. With a variety like Honeycrisp, it's not so easy to know whether you have a high percentage of spurs that are floral or if you're in an off year and you have a low percentage. Therefore, to do precision pruning properly, you have to cut buds on some representative trees to see if they're floral or vegetative. Our recommendation is to take two branches, one upper and one lower, from each of five representative trees. Take those into your office and with a razor blade, dissect vertically down through the bud and look at it under a microscope and see if it's floral or vegetative. Now, this is not always so easy to do. From that visual examination of branches under the microscope, we calculate what percent of the spurs are floral. I emphasize that we're only counting spurs. We're not counting lateral buds on one-year wood. We do include the terminal bud on every shoot because it can also be floral. Then we multiply the target fruit by some insurance factor. And then in the case of Honeycrisp, it's 1.8 and then divide by the fraction of buds that are floral. So I give two examples. A Honeycrisp tree in the on year, we've already calculated that our target number is 73 fruits per tree. But you multiply that by 1.8, we come up with this 131 spurs that we talked about. But in an on year, let's say 90% of those are floral. So we would divide 131 by 0.9 and we'd leave only 146 spurs. If they were all floral, we'd leave only 131 spurs. But in the off year, look at what happens to this. Our target stays the same at 73 multiplied by 1.8 for 131. But if only 30% of those spurs are floral, you have to divide 131 by 0.3, you get 437 which is a high number of spurs to leave. So that in the off year, if you can know by cutting buds in the winter, what fraction are floral, you can either prune aggressively in the on year or sometimes in the off year, not prune at all or prune very, very lightly. So that part becomes critical with Honeycrisp. Now, how do you physically go to the orchard and do this kind of pruning? At the moment, it's not so easy to determine whether you've reached the target bud number. It requires physical counting of some trees. Now, a good strategy that I like is to require the people doing the pruning to stop every hundredth tree and count it. And then write on a little tag on that tree how many burrs they left. And then this quality control person managing the crew can check those trees to see if pruning the severity should be adjusted to achieve the target bud number. Pruning reduces the amount of fruit buds on the trees, so you don't have to rely on chemical thinners to do all the work. Before you begin pruning, you need to determine how many buds to leave on the trees based on the crop load and fruit size you want from each block. Next, determine the percentage of buds in the block that are floral to adjust our target bud load. Vegetative buds will not produce fruit, so you want to make sure you have enough floral buds. Collect two medium-sized branches from each of three representative trees per block. Cut open each bud on each spur on these branches and determine whether it is a floral or a vegetative bud. Floral buds will have swollen meristem tissues and you will see developing flowers growing off of this meristem. Vegetative buds will have a narrower meristem and there will not be any developing flowers. Divide the number of floral buds you found by the total number of buds on the six branches. For example, if you cut open 150 total buds and found 60 floral buds, divide the 60 by 150 to get 0.4, indicating that 40% of the buds in the block are floral buds. Then, divide the target number of floral buds you calculated before by this number to get your target bud load. To figure out how many buds to take off, count all spur and terminal buds on five to 10 representative trees. Axillary buds on one-year-old shoots don't produce very good fruit. Subtract the target bud load you calculated from the average bud load on the trees you just counted. This number will tell you how many buds to remove from each tree. 
Now you're ready to begin pruning. Start by removing one to three of the largest limbs from each tree. Look for limbs about half the diameter of the trunk where the limb meets the trunk. Be sure to leave stub cuts for renewal growth. Make sure to keep track of how many buds you or your crew are removing as you're pruning. Next, simplify fork limbs down to a single axis. This will lower the bud load and reduce shading in the tree canopy for increased fruit quality. Finally, remove individual spurs until you have removed the correct number of buds. As you or your crew are pruning, be sure to count the number of spur buds on every hundredth tree to make sure you are close to your target, and readjust your pruning if needed. Once pruned, your floral bud load will be closer to your desired crop load. This means your chemical and hand thinning will now focus on getting the remaining fruit clusters down to a single fruitlet. We've suggested that you delay pruning of Honeycrisp and possibly Fuji until after green tip when you can really see how many floral buds there are. Sometimes it's difficult at the dormant stage to tell which buds are floral, but it's very doable with a microscope. But if you just want to wait and do all of your pruning of Honeycrisp after green tip, then it will be more easy to count the number of floral buds. But even if you do Honeycrisp pruning during the dormant season, prune lightly and then go back and readjust the number of buds between green tip and full bloom to get down to the target bud number. In Italy, we made one, two, three large cuts which removed some flower buds. It can be done at dormant until bloom. To clearly know the crop low, we intentionally delay the pruning cut decision until the pink stage to make a better evaluation between a floral and a vegetative bud. Then we work to remove buds from the top, the middle, and the bottom portion of the tree. Next, we remove anything underneath and too close to the trunk because that fruit won't get enough light at harvest. Finally, when we have completed all of that and still we need to remove more buds to achieve the target bud low, we begin artificial spur extinction. We remove the flowers from the cluster and leave the rest in a spur. The spur flowers removed here will return next year because the spur leaves remain. We start doing this kind of work to continue to reduce the number of buds. Flowers here, other resting here. Flowers here, other resting here. Flowers here, and a terminal at the tip of the fruiting unit in Gala.